penguins. You get a penguin from the wrong side of the iceberg. Yes. <laughs> That's a punk penguin. Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and basically anything we find interesting. I am Vin Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching this live. Hey, how's it going? Get back to work now. Come on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> As always, I do like to say we try to have some fun on this show. We make a couple of jokes. Yeah. The warning, there will be laughter. So if that terrifies you, good, good. You need some adversity in your life. Um, what's new? What's new? Let's see. I'm playing around with a bunch of stuff. I was talking in the pre-show how Harrison, um, you know, console maker, they've recorded things like Thriller, Queen, Pantera, and stuff like that. And they're famous for that. They sent me an offer code earlier last week to upgrade to Mixbus. And I traditionally have been using Adore. To which I said, I bought a copy of Mixbus. Oh, I guess I did at some point. It was like two years ago. I upgraded, did the thing. I'm like, I'm going to play with it. It was 20 bucks, whatever. Three days later, not happy, not content with the blood that they'd extracted from me. <laughs> like, hey, hey, Vin. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I like the product. We did a show with it Saturday. Like, you know, that really, really expensive version, it's not terribly, but it's like 300 and something dollars version of 32C, which is like the full analog uh, modeling for the EQs and stuff like that from the original console. I wouldn't even, I didn't even looked at it. How about you give us another 90 bucks? We'll give you a copy of that. Two days later, <laughs> two days later, there was uh, me walking around the house from outside. You could hear, fine. And... <laughs> That, that's what we're doing right now. So <laughs> the point of all that is things might sound exceptionally like warm and hipstery for the next week or so until I get to uh, kind of figure this thing out. It's very challenging, at least for me, because it's, it's limited. There's no surgical stuff you can do. It's four band EQs running off to a mix bus with like a three band EQ tone stuff. I got to learn how to use it. And that's part of the fun, part of the challenge. Also, Rough cut for that Mageable Pro that is done on uh, the Mageable Quad HDMI capture card. That should be uh, tomorrow-ish for patrons. I'll give you a little sneak peek at that and let me know what you think. How about you, Joe? Do you need your toys? Oh, boy. So I got my Pine Beck Pro. Yay. I've been wanting one. So I've been trolling eBay for them for one and I got one. Only 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it works That's pretty a well. Book, not a pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a classic pine book. Um, Cause I wanted to, I wanted to start my uh, pine forest family as it were. <laughs> I was on that waiting list for a while and I never got the thing. It's like, Oh, okay. I guess I won't buy them then. <laughs> yeah. I have to wait for the pine book pros. <laughs> and, and I also got a new pink penguin. Yay. This can go next to the one Pedro got me. He got me a pink one too. <laughs> that one looks yeah, disheveled. Yeah, it's a little scrappy, isn't it? Yeah. I, that's just the way it, it came. <laughs> well, it does have thicker hair on it than the, it actually has <laughs> hair on it compared to my other pink You got a pink one from the wrong side of the iceberg. Yes. <laughs> that's a punk penguin yeah oh <laughs> but it was still very cute it, it didn't look as disheveled on the picture <laughs> pedro mateus what's new in your life uh let's see that's not a, much yeah, that, that, that. i started playing um near uh the replicant one two two blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and uh, as uh, we'd already discovered, uh, and you posted that video about the dude uh, locking and unlocking the frame rate and trying different frame rates with the uh, the far mod. Uh, and yes, it does break the in-game physics a little bit. Everything goes a little too fast, but it's not just the physics. I discovered that the in-game clock is also tied to the uh, frame rate because while mm -hmm. Steam says I only have 12 hours in the game, mm -hmm. my save game says I have... 15 hours. Maybe the game was so good you just blacked out. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I blacked out, Steam blacked out. <laughs> yeah. Too powerful, man. <laughs> that's so one. yeah, that, that, that's what I spent most of Monday and uh, yesterday after the stream because free time comes at a premium now. <laughs> yeah. I remembered I had Red Dead Redemption 2 about half, like 
Monday afternoon. I'm like, well, that would have been nice to remember or what I was looking for something to do that morning. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and get into this. This caused everyone to kind of panic a little bit because we're talking about the open source mm-hmm. audio editor. Dasty is now part of Muse Group. That's right. You can buy an open source project, kind of. And um, don't worry about it. If they do anything to uh, jack it up, it's still going to be open source. You can stick a fork in it. But uh, I saw this because Martin posted a video. He was like, hey, I'm kind of in charge of Audacity now. I'm like, who? Martin? Martin from the guy who designed Ubuntu Touch? Yes, that one. And um, kind of happy mm-hmm. to see that. There it is. I just joined Audacity. So what do we think about that? I'm not terribly worried about anything because Martin seems to be really focused. I watched his video. We're talking about an audio editor that has four magnifying glasses next to each other in the primary interface. Like, <laughs> yeah, boy. I saw that. To which, <laughs> I said, yeah, I don't think I've ever touched them. I'm scared of them. Because admittedly, you know, I, I use Audacity for the show and like the final mix down to make the podcast. And, um, but I use it in general just as little as possible because talk about an application that will fight you each and every step of the way. I mean, the interface, not its ability, but the interface of Audacity is basically a running joke and has been. I mean, it's pre-2008 yeah, Blender <laughs> level up bad. Some of you understand what that means when I say that, because yeah, it's <laughs> well, a bit I'm hoping he streamlines streamlines the interface more. And what's really cool is that he does um, own uh, Muse Score, which is a very well known uh, music notation program for musicians. And it kind of makes sense that he has Audacity now because it, well, he's he, did a lot know. of work on Muse Score. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to see what's going on because it's going to take. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of leadership and to get people together to come in one piece and all that. But I mean, if we're going to do like a feature wish list, well, I guess I should, we should talk about like, Mm -hmm. how could this even take place? Because that was a lot of people wondering you it's open source. You can't do anything with that. Well, you can buy the name effectively and the rights to it. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to call this project this. And that's basically what took place. So, you know, you know, I don't think we have to worry about anything, but Let's talk about like a wish list because that was all I did. It was like Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's like, hmm, what do I want? I want to be that person on the internet. I'm like, hey, give me all these things. Like non-destructive editing. That'd be nice. I wouldn't mind yes. that. If Audacity <laughs> could have the audacity to spawn Jack Sinks before you hit the record button, that'd be neat. I wouldn't mind that. And for the love of flying spaghetti monsters, anybody who does ADR work. When I have to go back and edit things like pops and clicks and vocals, and I have like 15 minutes of that, could I get like a hotkey to generate silence? Because currently there's no way to do that. You highlight a little bit. You got to go up to the menu, drop down the menu, come to that, do that, click OK. Yeah, that's bad. Also, smooth scroll while tracking. I'd be very happy with that. That'd make me very happy because right now, if you move that, it goes wherever it wants. And it's kind of frightening. Pedro, is this the end of Audacity? As we know it. <laughs> that was one of the things that they were talking about in the video. And uh, <laughs> uh, even brought up the point that um, he was talking with people who contributed to um, Audacity and, and developed Audacity in the past. Uh, the Even the suggestion of changing the icon caused enough of a brouhaha in the community that they decided, you know what, we're just going to keep this one. (laughs) So, yeah, I don't think um, it will change all that much, honestly. Uh, There might be an option for a GUI, but then if they don't give an option, oh, can I go back to the old GUI? You know, GNOME. Uh, <laughs> if you don't give people that option, that's when the problem starts. <laughs> that, <laughs> but yes, it would be nice to have a GUI that looks like it wasn't made in 1999. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you have any thoughts on this, Jill? None. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, that uh, I agree with Pedro on that because I would, you know, it's. I think he had a really good point of making it so that you could still go to the classic interface if they, you know, revamp it and make a new one. Kind of like a lot of what 
a lot of people complain about with the GIMP. <laughs> Those well, of Strider, us who I was still like classic you out of this, but you brought it on yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ludris too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have different modes. Uh, GIMP, I think, is a very, very apt uh, thing to bring up because mm. it took me forever. I finally have gotten to the point where I can use GIMP in a windowed mode. Oh, okay. You know, Photoshop yeah. mode. Because I spent thirteen years using GIMP. Yeah, all you know, separate scattered modules. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like, this is just how I live my it's life. Like I have I one monitor with the full yeah. screen image, and have all the other toolbars in the other monitor. Yeah, great <laughs> idea in theory, and which made zero sense, you know, fifteen years ago because you didn't have multiple <laughs> monitors. But um, <laughs> having that one window, I mean, options are always good. But you know, just basic usability stuff with Audacity because it just needs it. But there were some issues with, yeah, you might have noticed that, you know, Ubuntu 2104 is out and you didn't get prompted to upgrade. Mm-hmm. No. And a lot of people were asking the why. And, uh, well, one of the maintainers has decided, uh, what was his name? Brian Murray, to let people know that, yes, that is intentional. Because, and th- this bit of news comes from uh, PC Mag. Um, In case you missed it, I'm quoting here, uh, in the release notes and hear people talking about it, I wanted to let you know that users of Ubuntu 2010 are not being prompted to upgrade to 2104. This is due to a bug with the current version of Shim uh, in Ubuntu 2004, which can cause systems with an early EFI to fail to boot after the upgrade. EFI is the precursor to UEFI, so uh, if you have... In my experience, it was mostly laptops that came with that functionality. It it was the thing that allowed you to write uh, a lot of the BIOS uh, post stuff directly to the hard drive or the SSD. And then you could, when you powered on, instead of doing the uh, power on self tests, it would just start booting immediately because everything would be already on the hard drive or the SSD and it would just go. It'd be, it'd be labeled fast booting but it required a specific EFI partition, which allowed you to do that. But apparently that's a bit broken in 2104. So if you are (laughs) using the uh, EFI partition, don't, you can still force the update with the do um, the apt upgrade distribution, whatever the command is. I can never remember. I always have to look it up. (laughs) You can still push the uh, upgrade out, but you, shouldn't unless you don't want your thing to boot yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i will i also That's won't be one. upgrading one of my think pads anytime soon i actually put ubuntu 21 uh 20.10 on it uh when i was uh, testing it um a while back ago and you know i haven't gotten the prompt yet so that's a good thing but that ha- that machine has a really early version of e- 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 efi in fact it's a dual core so it's really urgent <laughs> early <in. laughs> live a little have some fun see what yeah. happens uh, i don't know hey that's good i like to see planning like that I'm like okay potential problem look at that now, wait, at least we know that's an option. It can protect you from yourselves. And imagine being upset, going, oh, why didn't I get an update? I'm going to, for- oh, no. What happened? <laughs> no, I'm getting too many updates, so I'm going to fork this entire distribution. <laughs> no. Rocket Linux 8.3 RC1 is out. That is the Cent OS yeah. replacement. And so this mm-hmm. is the first RC, this first release candidate. Yeah, this is really Really cool. You know, the developers over at Rocky Linux are sure making quick work of this. Of this, And yeah, as Ven said, Rocky Linux 8.3 release candidate one has been released. And yes, this is the free and open source CentOS repla- replacement that is a one-to-one binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And it's made by the creator of CentOS. So th- this was uh, really great news when uh, Cent... Uh, the, the scent as we know it was discontinued. And uh, this version is based on the current stable RHEL 8.3, the GNOME 3.32 desktop, Samba 4.12.3, and RPM 4.14. So, you know, make sure to download the ISO and test and report bugs. This is going to be a fun one to play around with. 
Colonel 418. <laughs> We've yeah. been That's... over this, Pedro. What is your problem with Colonel 418? 417, you're fine with 419, not an issue, but 418, yeah. you just come out in force every single time. Yes, 419 <laughs> was actually a usable kernel. Okay. 419 allowed you to boot the Ryzen 2400G without having to play Russian roulette on are you going to mode set the APU properly this time. So yes, 419 was good. 418 was not. So yeah, no, I guess they really do mean to keep the promise of continuing the old scent legacy and uh, emphasis on the old bit there. Um, yeah. Okay. It, it's I'm running CentOS streams on one of the laptops. So I don't know. To me, that's kind of a weird flank. Yes. They appear to be doing exactly <laughs> what they said they were going to do. And yeah. why no one does. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good job guys. Um, mm -hmm. IBM had a thing that went down uh, like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Maybe you read about it. I think I ran across it on Hacker News. And what had happened is... Are we skipping Trinity? Oh, <laughs> we want to skip Trinity? Fine. I didn't want to <laughs> skip Trinity. That's what I was asking. <laughs> Go ahead, Pedro. Tell me. Tell us why we're skipping Matrix? Trinity. <laughs> Trinity <laughs> yeah, from the Matrix? the Matrix. But I'm actually going to let uh, Jill tell you no, about no, no, the, uh, I, the new I, release of Trinity. Why are we scripting it? Uh, now we're scripting it. No, we're not going to skip it. it. <laughs> so anyways it's it's so nice to see that the fork of kde 3.5 is still getting some love yes a trinity uh desktop environment release 14.0.10 is now available and includes so many updates and bug fixes and um this is really cool it includes a clam av the clam av with a k the kde front end for Clam AV antivirus, the Clam AV with a C. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And the Compose application, which gives a full screen view of all your tasks and or, and or virtual desktops, has been included. And they added adjustable icon spacing functionality in K Desktop. That's cool because that'll make the, the classic desktop look a lot better. <laughs> Definitely. And it now supports risk 5 32-bit, and 64-bit. And to see all nice. the changes, go into the show notes. There's lots of them there. And, and this is really cool because I, I run tw Trinity with a Q4 OS and really enjoy mm -hmm. it. I have that installed in one of my laptops. So yeah, that's cool. I tried fun. installing it on Fedora 34 on the, <laughs> uh, on the netbook. Uh, it's like, oh, we only have a repo for Fedora 33. Fine, I'll download the RPMs and install it manually. No, we hard linked it against specific versions of libraries. Right. I'm not going <laughs> yeah. to downgrade back to Fedora like 33. I'll yeah. wait later. <laughs> <laughs> so this is effectively just a desktop. They don't have like their own distribution that you can roll out. Or? No, no, it's just yeah, the, no, the desktop. This is just, but um, KDE 3 continued because KDE yeah. 4, let's face it, those first few versions, they were mm -hmm. bad. That was my first they were thought. beyond bad. <laughs> when I, like, <laughs> I I saw the screenshot, like, that looks like KDE 3-ish, like maybe yep. right before 4. Okay, I guess it is. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> but I do want to throw down that uh, they're shipping with an old school Amarok, the old one, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. updated old one. And man, I got some mileage out of that back in the day. That <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> and, uh, the, the thing that kind of jumped out at me was uh, I remember a lot of people around the death of uh, KDE 3, uh, they, they wanted something like Compose or Compose or however you want to say it. Uh, the like full screen, you hit a key full screen shows you all the windows like gnome does nowadays a lot of people really wanted to compliment gnome was that what that was yes yeah what are you, what are you done with pedro <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying kd2 uh likes to remove features features that people wanted and let's just be honest kd5 uh, it's still missing a bit so chop chop <laughs> yay <laughs> okay now, I've been the for support for open source devs <laughs> after internal Linux kernel maintainer argument goes public. Yeah. So 
I went through this and, you know, the best I can make of it is that, you know, I, I remember, like I said, like two weeks ago and it sounded very draconian, like IBM's like, you can't work on this. IBM owns all your things. So the dude was using his personal GitHub ID to contribute to VNIC, you know, open source project. And IBM apparently has a system in place where employees use their IBM GitHub ID so Big Blue can track their contributions and be like, hey, we've made the X amount of contributions to open source and all that, which is good. I read through this little article and um, they were talking to um, an IBM spokesperson and whatnot. And you know, they go over and they're like, hey, okay, what do you think of this? This is what I didn't like. The original message. As an IBM employee, you're not allowed to use your Gmail account to work on any way on VNIC. You're allowed to use your personal email account as a hobby. No, you are not. You are an IBM employee 100% of the time. Please remove yourself completely from the maintainer's mm. file. I, I grant you a one-time exception on contributions <laughs> to Phoenix to make this change. Hmm. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I remember reading this when it went down and thinking, that's not right. That doesn't make any sense. IBM has always encouraged contributions to open source by their employees. They've always been good about that. Whether it be personal or working for IBM, personal accounts or IBM accounts. So, well, you kind know, of that's rolling the way. back into this is yeah. like, you know, Todd in an interview, Todd Moore, the VP of Open Technology, is like, we respect this was during the interview. He's like, we respect our developers' need to be individuals. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, they just want to make sure everybody gets credit and all that fun stuff. And this kind of goes off as like, hey, both parties in this were acting outside of the. Uh, yeah, both parties were not being very nice to each other. Because yeah. this is Wednesday, otherwise I'd use other words yeah. to describe the situation. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back and read this. Uh, links to this will be in the show notes if you want a better grip on it. But I don't know why, because I didn't see any denials in this, which got me thinking. Mm. I'm like, wait, so you're not going to come out like, we would never tell somebody that they are our IBM employee 100% of the time and not to work on something, period, mm-hmm. unless... We're getting credit. I think that's the is supposed to be the unspoken truth. Well, emphasis on the unspoken, and they were speaking it, and then the whole thing leaked, and this is why (laughs) company emails shouldn't go public. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, like you'd think, like some basic reporting here, you know, from Tech Republic, they they would have that same thought. Like I, I don't see a denial of this. Maybe we should mention or bring it up in the article. You know, critical thing. Yeah, you know what. This, this little bit from Tech Republic just came across as like, let's just move this over and say, hey, look, every, everybody's cool. Everybody's happy. Don't look into this at all. And, you know, I'm not just saying that because, you know, Viacom CBS tapped an IBM executive last year to lead up its media initiatives. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> but I will let you guess who the parent company of uh, ZDNet and Tech Republic are. Hmm. Next story is <laughs> Open IPC. So, this is a very good idea because we all know if you get IP cameras, security cameras, stuff like that, they might not ever get updated. And they're probably, ironically, frighteningly insecure. Now, the Open IPC is a logic operating system based on the Open WRT. You know it. You love it. And it's targeting the IP cameras with chipsets from different vendors. They get a couple, you know, the high three, what, 3516s, uh, 3518s, 3516s, all the fun stuff. Now, they want to develop universal portable firmware supporting everything they can get their hands on and delivering updates, which you might have figured out that, hey, I'm just not getting that from, wait a minute. What do you mean that $30 IP camera security system I bought off AliExpress isn't getting updates? How dare? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean it's bricked? <laughs> Yeah, no, as you mentioned, uh, ironically enough, it's the security cameras and whatever other systems you happen to have backing those security cameras that happen to be the single most exploitable thing in the stack because they're never updated. And when they are updated, sometimes they brick themselves. Uh, There's tons of videos out there of people legitimately hacking these cameras because they're not getting updates anymore. I need this to be reliable. I need this to be secure and I need to unbrick it because I paid a lot of money for it. And now it's just a very oddly shaped paperweight. 
So, yeah. And there's also the added benefit of not having black box firmware on yeah. your home. Actually being able to yeah. see what's going on, ironically yeah. enough. <laughs> Security <laughs> camera, yeah. And then having it uh, plugged into a router that uses open WRT or... or uh, PF sense or something is a, is a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Pretty dope. Uh, always glad to see projects like that. And another thing we want to give a quick mention to is there's a new version of the YouTube DL GUI. Very quick mention too, mm-hmm. because they are very, very sparing in the, uh, the change log is this version fixes some bugs, adds option for Varibus Kodak and as a new icon. Hey, that, that's it. Icons matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying icons don't matter. I'm just saying you uh, go to elaborate a little bit. Fine. I'll just download it and see for myself. Uh, and I think that's very much the point here because, yes, this is just the GUI. Uh, we, uh, we've we talked about another uh, option that has uh, actual the YouTube DL functionality actually included in it. But this one is just a GUI, so you will still need to have YouTube DL installed or whatever Solus is calling YouTube DL nowadays. What was it? YTDL. Something. Something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> do you have, do you just use it from the command line? I, I've already said I use 4K video downloader because you know what? That's the easiest one click. Pay, you don't even have to paste in that thing. It just opens. It's like, hey, you got something near a buffer. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Boop. Done. I, 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 use, I it use it every all now and then. Not as much yeah. anymore, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used I to do use it. Uh, no, come on. No, right, right, right. <laughs> See, the trick is both <laughs> of you have Horrible to start talking. talking at the exact same time. So get right <laughs> Go ahead, time. Pedro. okay uh so i used to use it a lot when i had really really bad internet that's why i used youtube dl and i just downloaded the highest quality because the places where i did get internet is like okay we're just going to download everything that's on my sub box download it all in the best quality possible then go home and watch it Mm. that that's yeah (laughs) that was my use case for it because I didn't have internet except for the little uh, 3G that only had five gigs or so a month and it cost me 30 or 40 pounds for those five gigs. So, mm-hmm, no. <laughs> I'm glad it's got a nice little GUI on Arch. It's easy, you know. Yay. Yeah. Install it on Ubuntu. There's a PPA mm-hmm. for it. And for the adventurous, uh, you know, PIP3 install YouTube DL. Just get that put in there and... You don't, don't use PPAs on Debian, so, but hey, you're running Debian. Just build it from source. You know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. My people. Okay. Um, what do we got? Okay. Oh, we got a little slice of pie. Piestrom. We got to talk oh, about that. Do. But we got a gang of people to think simply because yeah. uh, we, we got a little do. <laughs> We got a patron. Uh, that's how we finance this show. You know, if you like what we do, kick us a buck. We don't do a show. There's no charge, anything like that. It's a weird mm-hmm. business model because we just put everything out for free mm-hmm. anyway, man. But if you want to help us out, we would very much appreciate it. And a couple of people took us up on that dare. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Holy <laughs> Toast, who is a new patron and who's in chat right now. Yay, Holy Toast. We've been enjoying him, having him in chat and chatting with them. He's, he's been uh, contributing to the community a lot, which has been really great. And we have Monica. Yay. Another new patron. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you may recognize Monica uh, if you, well, if you're on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that Monica. The, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very active on Twitter. It's and if you uh, click on her name, it says uh, Ubuntu Community Manager. I don't know. Representative. Ubuntu community. I don't person, know Pedro. So. I don't yeah. creep on everyone yes. who becomes a patron. <laughs> 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 it wasn't creeping. It's just a, oh, hey, new patron. Let's click up. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Holy Toast. Thanks. Um, Holy Toast is new um, executive producer and um, Monica. But Arthurin, mm-hmm. uh, my friend, long-time Monica. patron. <laughs> long-time patron. Uh, it's like, you know what? Do you know what my username needs? I'm like, what, man? Like, some bling. 
the bubbling. Oh, yeah. A different color. <laughs> <laughs> he has uh, joined Omegas at the advisor level. So. Yay, Arthurin. We love Arthurin. Uh, yeah. You can still see it. It's uh, right there. There it is. Evidence. <laughs> Can't take it back. Too late now. Uh, the internet knows. Uh, it's been there the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Arthurin has the, the record of contributing to our show notes more than anyone else. <laughs> oh yeah it's like i want he, you guys to talk about this this and this talk about other things <laughs> i mean you know <laughs> i got that record but you're close second arthur yeah worry. yeah i'm one of our patrons <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding uh check this out uh michael got us all some things didn't he Pedro? yeah on saturday <laughs> yeah so foxy uh, decided you know what i'm feeling a bit left out i want more people to play the video games that i like so uh at least me and ven got uh metal gear solid 5 the definitive experience the one that has everything here's, here's the beautiful thing about that because that, that <laughs> like went down during saturday come hang out with us mm-hmm. on saturday we got like four hours of a rock block to record that and and after shows and and I heard Pedro was talking about Metal Gear then because mm-hmm. you got a gift copy. Then you and Jordan were talking mm-hmm. about Metal Gear things. I'm like, ah, nerds with their Metal Gear. We get done. <laughs> we go to play some Left for Brad in the after show, put up Steam. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I got a copy too. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I only noticed after the show too because I started Steam and I saw the notification pop up. It's, oh, Thank ah. you, Foxy. <laughs> Yay, Foxy. So I guess we're going to have to sit down we and um, figure out WTF well, for me, a Metal Gear Solid. I, I want to say V, but I, it's an emoji in my head now. I'm like, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's brilliant, man. Thanks a lot for that. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. That's neat. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, what do you want to hug? <laughs> you I hug are them all. all absolutely crazy, and <laughs> we love you. <laughs> it is kind of brilliant. So, all right, uh, that's enough of us being loving. It's painful. Oh. <laughs> we got to get into a slice of pie. Look, this one isn't leaking. Which I felt one that wasn't <laughs> leaking. <laughs> it's cherry uh, pie. Sweet love, cherry pie. <laughs> 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 what is pie strum cool. storm but yeah <laughs> the, i found this uh this morning while i was uh in the pooper <laughs> i was looking at my phone obviously and one of the things that popped up uh on the rare occasion that youtube gets it right uh was someone using pie storm to uh get a raspberry pi uh they used the 3b plus but this is actually meant for the a plus as the processor for an omega 500 oh you saw that youtube video yeah i skipped through it this morning yeah all right <laughs> and the um it it's yeah no it it actually uh worked really well uh the, the, apparently there are co- there's a couple of issues with running games uh because the way that the firmware is currently working it sees the pi as having two uh floppy drives and it tries to load the game from the wrong one so mm. that, 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 the that's the only fixing that was yeah anything that you're gonna be loading off your amiga that is gonna be coming from a disk image is really what you're looking yes. for right there mm. yeah I watched the video. But yeah, too. no, using the A plus, which, you know, I have. You have an A plus. A plus. It's, mm. oh, it's over there. It's under the TV. <laughs> Why? Uh, because it's got um, Cody on it and Nori uses it to play music through the sound bar. Why? That's, it, it is the music <laughs> box. <laughs> yeah. It's How got that little square screen box. and it's. How it's the music you? box, yeah. <laughs> you could be plugging that into your non-existent Amiga, man. What's wrong with you? That, yeah, th- th- I saw him do that. It's like, okay, I have been wanting like an Amiga or a uh, Commodore 64, but yeah, I do have an A+, so I <laughs> could totally do something like that. So I went on eBay to look up the price of the Amigas, Ooh. even the 500s. Uh, I don't want to yeah. pay a hundred pounds for just the case. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, that's, nope. uh, it's okay. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do have uh, you- both the Amiga 500 and the Commodore 64 in my collection. 
which this will, this would be kind of cool to play with. I'm a little hesitant to change it, but <laughs> I, I think this is cool enough. <laughs> I, I'd use this. You can use, yeah, you can use uh, the, uh, it's currently only for the three models because the GPIO, uh, well, the pins, they change around in between revisions. Every night. Uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's for the three. It works with the the three B plus mm. and the A plus. Don't hit the microphone arm. Uh, the, <laughs> and I'm it, leaving yeah, that in there you just you. run this. <laughs> you just run this bit of software, and your <laughs> Raspberry Pi becomes a CPU. It replaces the uh, sixty eight thousand. And it can emulate uh, the sixty eight ten, the sixty eight twenty, the sixty eight thirty, the sixty eight forty. You could have you could turn your Amiga five hundred into an Amiga three thousand. But yeah, wouldn't it be a lot quicker if I just spent a couple of hundred dollars and bought like a Vampire two accelerator board? That's yeah. Cheating. Well, this is a lot cheaper, <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. Is I do have one of those Vampire boards, and this is a yeah. lot cheaper. But like this just goes to your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. The vampire yeah. board. Oh, there's, there's a word. Oh, it works. <laughs> yeah i'm just giving this i'm sure they'll figure it out this <laughs> is something you absolutely should keep an eye on especially if you're into collecting amigas mm -hmm. and you got them laying around and you like torturing ancient hardware for your own amusement <laughs> go for it go for it and uh it, it's fascinating being able to play around with stuff like that and hey you very well may have a old pie laying around that doesn't yeah. have cody on it look under your tv there might be one yeah, <laughs> and Pedro, you may be able to Mine's find an old uh, uh, C sixty four that that you'll you can find those cheaper. <laughs> of course, you've probably mm -hmm. already looked. <laughs> <laughs> they are cheaper, it's still not anywhere. Uh, you know, in the yeah double digit range. Yeah, they're <laughs> because they have uh, shot up in price over a hundred pounds. <laughs> no, yeah, they've definitely <laughs> shot up in price. I remember when you could get them for twenty five bucks on eBay. <laughs> So, <laughs> not anymore. Beautiful people. If you would like to write in and let us know what type of old hardware you like to torture at home for your amusement, uh, head over to our web zone, LinuxGameCast.com. Smash that contact button. If you're game dev, we got some rules there. Not really rules, like broad suggestions that you should absolutely follow to the letter. Um, or, hey, if you want to come on the show, you get a project you're working on, we'd love to have you. Just make sure you pick the appropriate topic. Give us an email. Give us an email. You know what? How about a name? Maybe a subject. Write a message. Don't put a lot of uh, links in there. We got a spam golem. They'll be like, ah, you can't send it. But there is an email address also on that contact page if you would rather use that. Pedro Mateus, uh, somebody's written in the show for, uh, agrees with you, which makes me question this person. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't my AstroTurf account, I swear. <laughs> it's not called David. I'm going to have to Aww. look into this account to find out whether or not it is. It's like... <laughs> is this other Pedro? No, no. It's Again, it's not called David. <laughs> but yeah, uh, David actually wrote in, uh, totally agree with your critiques of Gnome. <laughs> well, you have my attention. I like the Gnome philosophy in some ways, and I've really tried to love their DE, but... It has a few bizarre flaws that always push me away, usually towards Cinnamon or XFC. <laughs> Too That's much the correct option. <laughs> yes. Uh, I can appreciate quote unquote simplicity uh, to make customization. Uh, uh, I skipped a line there. Quote unquote simplicity and a clean modern look. But I don't like it when a DE seems intentionally designed to make customization difficult or impossible. Even for extremely basic things, it boggles the mind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been shouting about that. To install. For, uh, you need extensions. <laughs> you can't use the desktop <laughs> environment by itself. You, Ubuntu comes with GNOME by default. It comes with four extensions installed out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But hey, uh, <laughs> simplicity. Once again, I would like to apologize on behalf of LTCL OP for Pedro Aww. hating on GNOME for another episode. <laughs> well, they, they are improving it. Um, I was nice no to GNOME earlier. Now it's just the, <laughs> the uh, balance out the status quo. That, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, but that's Aww. the equivalent of like that first email I get. Like, hey, Vin, everything do is awesome. And I'm like, why don't you just ask me the question? Because that's coming up next. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was saving that for this bit right here because thank you, David. Uh, I, I feel 
a bit better knowing I'm not the only one. You were Someone out there had to agree with me. So. Aww. I, I'm going to get a text from Nori <laughs> about an hour. Like, what did you do to him? He's walking around the house in his yoga pants and his chest puffed out. I know. <laughs> Real proud. <laughs> Well, the nice thing is num 40 they're trying to integrate more extensions because they're they're listening to the community and and things are starting to change with that so no, that's, <laughs> that's a good they're thing. listening or, to the community <laughs> or or you can wait or you Where can, can wait we subscribe and to the rest of your fanfic <laughs> because the, a lot of the community was really mad with the changes that they made it's like can we have an option to go back to the old layout please no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> how about how about everyone just pick the one that like? If you like what Gnome's doing, you use it. I mean, I don't see the benefit in I, I didn't because like the Gnome hater aid train. I don't use them, but I'll defend like their option, like, hey, this is our vision, this is what we're gonna do. And I was like, I think that's backwards, but you know what? That's the end of my conversation with it. Like, mm. okay, um, I'm gonna use the desktop that has the options that I like. We're not at a lack of options is what I'm saying. Don't yeah. waste your time and energy. Don't become Pedro. This, this is <laughs> no. Or, well, you, you know, can use do, a bunch of mate really like I do. <laughs> or Gnome Classic. Or you could use or XFCE, use, which is the right option. So, Or you, you can use Pop! OS Cosmic, which is coming soon. <laughs> mm. I got this uh, from Biko. <laughs> You better remember, I, I bought a, I, I was just like, hey man, let's, uh, it's that time of year again. Let's buy another cheap USB HDMI capture dongle off Amazon and give it a little benchmark, see how it works. And well, I got a surprise, didn't I? Um, it turns out the one that I bought wasn't even USB 3. It was a USB 2 with some blue pin smeared over the connector and it couldn't do a 1080p <laughs> 60 at all. It didn't, it legitimately didn't even have the pins for it. And mm. blue SB. <laughs> yeah, blue SB, baby. Uh, Pico writes, he's like, that's exactly the HDMI capture I got months ago. I needed it mostly to debug some Raspberry Pi boot troubles. That, you know, that's a good option. Show mm -hmm. way too short to be parsed by a human before the device rebooting again. So it's okay. I did wonder, though, why the frame rate was so jacked up. But blame the undervolted HDMI splitter it came without fitting pan so i'm happy that it does something lesson learned i suspect similar for a dead cheap sd writer or yeah moral of the story too good to be true almost always is because it was 20 bucks and i was thinking in my head probably like pico was thinking maybe it's probably not going to be great 1080p 60 it's going to be rough around the edges but you know <laughs> they probably made enough. It's such a little like com commodity. Um, it <laughs> got to be something out there like 20 bucks. I can do 1080p 60. I was incorrect. And yeah. So if, uh, if you're planning on buying an HDMI capture card, be safe. Uh, a cheap one that's going to work, even if it's some no name and something, it's going to be in the $70 price range. Does that yeah. sound fair? That those yeah, definitely. Don't look at anything if you mm -hmm. want a good encoder that doesn't smear and cause artifacts. Uh, work. Yeah. Yeah, it works. <laughs> 50, uh, 55 pounds or higher. All the ones below that are most likely poop. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's going to do it for the show. We got to get out of here. We are starting to run a little bit, of, a little bit of a long. I don't know how I was going to run <laughs> a that. little bit of long, a little bit of a long <laughs> show title. Somebody bang suggests that. Probably. So short. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to uh, pull up a little bit of music, and we're going to roll nice. the credits. Yay! And thanks once again to our new patrons, Holy Toast and Monica. Yay! And thank you, and M. thank Fox you very Dog. much, Artharen. Uh, you uh, <laughs> awesome, insane, crazy person. Yeah, you're amazing. We Never love change, our, our <laughs> Are you just figuring because. that out about that boy? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> he is absolutely. I knew he was amazing. Now, now it's just more confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Darkwing! Yay! I, and our sea monsters, Jackie, Ronaldo, Ryder, and the coolest L. thing you guys made me go update the show notes with credits <laughs> yeah. and stuff. I'm like, ah, I got to re-render all that. <laughs> <laughs>
Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Got Monica. Oh, Arthurin says more compliments, please. Aww. You're beautiful, Arthurin. Beautiful. You're one of my I'm, favorite. I don't think I've actually seen your face, but you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, you're one of my favorite people in the LGC community. You're so caring and. I'm going to be ill. And so, you know, you can contribute so much <laughs> to our work. All right, beautiful people. But seriously, <laughs> keep it awesome. We'll see you next week. And we Bye-bye. love you too, Holy Toast. <laughs> Bye. Bye, all.